De Kroatische pianist Dejan Lazic durft het aan om het vioolconcert van de grote Duitse componist Johannes Brahms te bewerken tot pianoconcert. En Brahms zelf schreef er twee en nu is er dus een derde pianoconcert. En ik moet zeggen, hoed af, want het is een ongemeen fraaie bewerking geworden, stevig in Brahms stijl geschreven. En voordat ik met Dejan ga praten, zullen we eerst even een klein stukje gaan luisteren van zijn arrangeerkunsten. Samen met het Atlanta Symphony Orchestra met Robert Spano. En ik ga met hem praten, want ik moet zeggen, ik heb er als luisteraar een nieuw klassiek pianoconcert bij. Want dat willen we toch. Good morning, Dan. Good morning. Good morning. Nice that you are here. Thank you, it's All pleasure. All from Germany, München. Uh, yeah, actually from Los Angeles, matter of fact. Okay. Yes. Where you performed? Where I performed, yeah. Um, I was on tour on um, the West Coast, Seattle, then down to California. Mm -hmm. But I live currently in Munich. That's okay. Right. About your work, the violin concerto of Brahms arranged to piano concerto. I thought, was it pure love for this piece or also or just to enlarge the, you can say, the encyclopedia of uh, the classical piano concerto. You know, um, I was thinking about this very much. There are many reasons why I did this arrangement, subjective and objective. Um, one of my first recordings I've ever heard was the Heifetz recording of this concerto. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think that in the 19th century, it was not a taboo to arrange a music of other composers of your own music as well. Um, I think that also important fact for me was that uh, this concerto, this violin concerto, had its roots in both friendship and practicality. It was written for Joachim, mm -hmm. the dedicatee and good friend, uh, not necessarily for violin, but for Joachim. And since Joachim was a violinist, it became a violin concerto, you know, and uh, also, it is very important when one goes into the uh, correspondence between Brahms and Joachim, one detects that uh, it uh, first appeared to be as a symphony. And then later, um, Brahms cut four movements into three movements, then later he integrated some parts of it into second piano concerto, and then later it became a violin concerto. So knowing all this, I thought it might be really um, out of artistic necessity, a good try, and without such commission, I um, went to this work and uh, go, went deeper into this, so it became, as it is now, six years later. Six years later? Yes, it How took five, six years, actually. To, to arrange this whole to concerto? To arrange the whole concerto. Mm -hmm. um, the score hasn't been touched, and, uh, you know, it is not a transcription. If one played um, this concerto on a flute, that would be a transcription. But one has to really uh, put this score, to set this music as if Brahms would have written it for piano. And one has to um, write in Brahms style. So one integrates the violin part into a piano setting, so to speak. Okay. So, and that took quite a bit of time, a lot of decision making. Yes, I think yeah. so too. But let's listen to uh, two fragments. One, it's the violin concerto, it's the second movement. And after that, we do your version. Okay. Let's listen.
both give me tears, so it's all right, I think. Thank you very much. You know, <laughs> the biggest compliment for, for me, the biggest compliment for me was after the first rehearsal um, when the concertmaster of Atlanta Symphony came mm -hmm. and uh, said to me, well, this sounds um, as if it was a piano concerto. And, and this was the main goal. It was, um, as I said, artistic necessity. It was not a taboo to do these things in the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. We know what Brahms thought of arrangements and transcriptions. He arranged many. Uh, pieces of other composers, for instance, Bach, um, Chacon for violin solo, Brahms arranged for piano left hand, Schoenberg arranged Brahms music, Brahms arranged his own music, transcribed many pieces. So it was um, in the spirit of the time, and uh, um, I'm very grateful um, uh, to my label. Mm. They were ready to release this uh, um, world premiere, and also to Robert Spano, the conductor in Atlanta Symphony. We premiered it in Atlanta last October, and uh, was it hard uh, to find an orchestra to do this? Or it was, in a way, um, a very nice story. Um, um, I was, as I said. I wrote this for my own heart, with no set commission. So I was warming up with some tunes, uh, also this beginning of this second movement, before playing um, Beethoven Emperor Concerto with Atlanta Symphony. And Robert Spano was next door, and he came into my dressing room and said, what are you doing? What no. is this? <laughs> so I'm playing uh, Brahms' third piano yes. concerto. And he himself is, you know, ambassador of not only new music, but also he finds it interesting uh, uh, in, to program, you know, um, also uh, interesting arrangements or, or, or um, variations on, on famous um, um, tunes. Okay. So he's a uh, really dedicated artist and he's himself a composer and arranger and a, pi a great pianist, so not only a conductor. So he said immediately, uh, please let, uh, let us play together, you know, after the concert. So we went. Um, after the concert into the dressing room and I played him through and uh, he immediately said, oh, we have to premiere it, give okay. me world premiere. Uh -huh. So it was really a wonderful thing for me to hear. Okay, going back to the second movement. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're a pianist, you're a composer. Yes, as okay, well. Okay, so you know the violin. Yeah. You knew the violin concerto by heart, I think, also the sound. Yeah. Now play for me the, 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 the entrance. The when, entrance. When so we have this um, um, <coughs> divine, eternal tune. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the problem is a violin can vibrate. There is a sustained sound. Yes. Um, but what are attributes piano has and violin doesn't have? We have pedal. We can use polyphony in a much uh, um, expanded sense. Um, we can do certain arpeggios. We can do certain uh, things that violin cannot do. And uh, of course, if you integrate this um, theme, this tune, into a piano setting of the late 19th century in a Brahms style, um, after a lot of work and <laughs> experimenting, you come a up sleepless with Sleepless nights the, or not? Uh, excuse me? Sleepless nights. Sleepless nights as well, okay. but also dreams, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so th th this was really something you uh, take home, so to speak. Okay. You know? uh -huh. And uh, after a while, I came up with this. There is, you know, a way how Brahms uh, would himself um, set this mm -hmm. tuning, this violin writing into mm -hmm. piano score. I can hear that's typical Brahmsian, but uh, okay. show what, 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 what chord is typical for... What makes it Brahmsian? First yes. of all, use of rhythm. You know, mm -hmm. um, especially in the, in, the, in the third movement, the beginning of third movement, I think if one hand has slower rhythm, like... <laughs> The left hand very often is not only a counterpoint, um, we should know that Brahms comes from Bach, Bach inspired by Bach mm -hmm. and Beethoven, and matter of fact, this was also great inspiration for myself, since Bach and Beethoven uh, arranged their own violin concertos as piano concertos. So uh, Beethoven's violin concerto is, matter of fact, sixth piano concerto. concerto yeah. So one can also play with this, one should go deeper into the score, see what other instruments are doing. That's also very important. So. I know maybe this score better than some uh, piano concerto score, definitely, because you spend so much time. So you come up with... <laughs> and it has...
has this alla ungarese okay. feeling. It is the same key as the Rhapsody, B minor. So you, you use, in a way, uh, same range, um, same chords that Brahms maybe used in his uh, 118 piano pieces, this or this Rhapsody that okay. was actually written uh, about the same time. Now, for us, but yes. first tell me, is there something else coming up? Yes, there is um, um, uh, Beethoven's fourth piano concerto coming up next um, with Australian Chamber Orchestra. Um, we recorded it um, last winter mm -hmm. um, during the tour, a national tour in but Australia. In arrangement? Oh, so in arrangement. I was talking next city. Uh, in arrangements, you know, um, I promised the world that this is actually the only uh, romantic violin concerto that could stand this transcription, and I would definitely stand to it. But I'm working um, on my next project as a composer, so that will be original piano concerto. Okay. You're going to live in Amsterdam very soon? So yes, that is drop also. Drop by when you when live you here. Thank you, you very here. much. I would Thank love you for to. being here. And you did a great, great job. Thank really. you it's so much for your support. Thank, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Dejan Lazic met Johannes Braat.